So, <laughs> hello everybody. Um, my name is Christoph Marshall mm -hmm. and I'm part of the LG Europe R&D and in charge of technology strategy and uh, special technology topics, not specifically related to products, but to the core technologies in them. So what we would like to show you today is uh, a small overview of um, who we are and uh, where we are in, in terms of the Android landscape and what's the LG point of view of the Android landscape. And then uh, briefly going over to uh, Miracast, which is basically our strong topic we are presenting here today. <clears throat> so Android introduced the possibility to control multiple displays in Android 4.2 and uh, the strongest, the strongest asset of this is a wireless display using Wi-Fi technology and using an open standard to connect to it. So, um, just proceeding already. Um, we are LG Electronics and we are one of the biggest handset manufacturers in the world and in the top class of device manufacturing. We are not that present in the European landscape and we are, we are more on the on the on on the on the common range of devices but globally we are a very strong mm. partner for many technology providers and uh, that's also what uh, we did for the first time the end of last year with the Nexus 4 which you probably all know the new reference device or the latest reference device from from Google for the Android OS which is developed by LG using a lot of LG assets, a lot of LG in-house technology and uh, in-house developments in terms of, of hardware and, uh, and software stacks. And uh, the Optimus G is our LG-made variant of it, so a, a, a device where LG was able to also include uh, software improvements and uh, specific software features on top of the standard Android device. But quickly talking about the hardware, what we did on the Nexus 4 and the Optimus G is we leveraged from all the sister companies we have. We have a very strong relationship with, with, with Qualcomm, which allowed us to be the first one on the market to introduce the, the Snapdragon S4 device with the Nexus 4 and the Optimus G. But we also have sister companies like LG Display, which is one of the biggest display panel manufacturers in the world and a strong driver in uh, technology evolution of, of LCD and plasma and OLED. As well as LG Chemical, which is the second biggest battery manufacturer in the world. And LG Inotech, which is a sister company of LG Electronics, uh, specialized in components like speakers, microphones, camera modules, and so on. And we leveraged from all these areas, from, from all these partners, to bring a very uh, specific product with uh, exclusive technology advantages to the market using an LG display, which is an LCD display with a, with a quality which is currently not available to, to uh, other vendors on the market. LG Chemical providing a, a higher capacity battery at a small form factor and uh, LG Inotech which allowed us to bring a, in case of uh, the Optimus G a 13 megapixel camera into a device of such a slim uh, form factor. So <clears throat> the main topic we are talking about today is uh, Miracast. Wi-Fi Miracast is an uh, and st a standard defined by the Wi-Fi Alliance and certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance. So there, are, there was a demand created in uh, a year, one and a half years ago, to, so, to simply provide a wireless display option to consumer electronics, to, to IT products, without uh, much hassle. So the, the definition of the Wi-Fi display standard, which became in the end Miracast, was uh, started. And Miracast is a replacement for HDMI in that sense, allowing you to, to output any type of content to a display. And technically it's an H.264 MPEG-2 video stream, which is provided over Wi-Fi direct to the output device, decoded on the output device and shown on the stream. It's an open standard, which is an important point. So it's nothing like, like AirPlay, which requires a specific platform. It's a standard every, everyone can certify for. And it's 
a feature every product can support which is supporting Wi-Fi and is uh, capable enough in terms of CPU and GPU performance to uh, encode the video stream without any impact on the, on the user experience. So technically what Wi-Fi Miracast is doing in, in, the, in a high level concept is that on the source level you are taking the information from the display buffer it is encoded in an in a MPEG-2 video stream. It's packetized. It's combined with an audio source if it if one is available. It's an optional optional component. If there is DRM on top of this, the content is encrypted as well. Then it's it's multiplexed, and then basically the the rest of the components are reused from Wi-Fi. So the whole Wi-Fi stack is simply included into Miracast and on the, on the output device the same is, is going vice versa. So the Wi-Fi stack is receiving a content stream on the protocol level. There, is a, there was a handshake ongoing to agree on how the stream is formatted and which resolution and so on is supported by the output device. It's then demuxed and decoded and then output on the screen. So <clears throat> you looking at it in the logical block of Android, what's going on is that this is your, your usual flow you have. So you have content which is composed, then it's created on a display surface, and then it's delivered to a display controller and output to the LCD. So what Miracast and the secondary display option that we go into detail in a few minutes is adding on top of this is to create multiple display surfaces and simply hand over, in this case, to Miracast to capture the display content, encode it in a video stream and hand it over to the RTP transport of the, of the Wi-Fi stack. In case there is audio available, as mentioned, it's included in the multiplexing. For you as a developer, it doesn't mean that you have to take care of all these elements. That's, what, that's the really nice thing of, of Android 4.2. So we, are, we have included Miracast already in Android 4.1 as a, as a mirroring option. So you are easily able to mirror your applications to a bigger screen using the Optimus G or other high tier, premium tier Android devices currently launched on the market. But with Android 4.2 and the Nexus 4, you can individually control what is shown on which screen and you can, you can directly influence the content presented there. So overall, it's commercially available now already. So for simple mirroring, you can start straight away with a very wide range of, of uh, high performance devices. So basically everything in the range of a, of a quad core, Qualcomm especially, quad core device is, uh, is capable uh, to support Miracast. And within this year, we are expecting much more devices to become available as a source device. Because what's required, as mentioned on the device side, is you need a GPU which is capable enough and you need a CPU which is capable enough to do it. And since it's a standard uh, managed by the Wi-Fi Alliance, what the vendor a manufacturer has to do is, in any case, he has to certify for 802.11 NGAAC, whatever. And in addition to that, certify for Miracast is not a big, it's, it's not a big effort. It's just a matter of the platform. And so we are expected to become deployed in commercial products much faster than you see TV out, for example, in products. Because it's not requiring additional hardware, it's just following the flow of CPU performance increase. And for the output devices, from this year, the Wi-Fi Alliance started certifying devices in general. So mobile phones as well as output devices. So the 2013 product line of uh, many manufacturers, including LG, so TVs which include Wi-Fi or home cinemas which include Wi-Fi, will gradually also include Miracast support. So we can expect a very quick deployment also in consumer electronics area. As well as there will be dongles available you can simply connect over HDMI to use a wireless uh, display. This is what we are showing on our booth as well. So you are free to come and visit us. When we're looking into the, into the coding, I will hand over to my colleague Thomas Witt.
will give you a brief introduction on what you actually have to do in order to put this feature into your code. So, Thomas. Thank you, Christoph. Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Thomas Fitz. I'm in charge of the small mobile R&D team of LG Electronics uh, located in Germany, actually in uh, Düsseldorf or near to Düsseldorf. And yeah, I have the pleasure to give you a brief introduction to the secondary display API introduced by Google in Android 4.2. Actually, Christoph introduced Miracast and the secondary display API is one way to use this programmatically. Um, what it does is that the secondary display API gives you a hardware agnostic way of controlling your external displays. Hardware agnostic means it can be connected via Miracast, but it can be also connected via any other technology. Um, for instance, MHL or Slimport as it's supported on the Nexus 4. So that means when you use this API, um, you don't necessarily need to have Miracast support, but it's one of the nicest way to use it because it's without cable. And uh, therefore we believe this combination of Miracast and this API is what allows uh, really cool use cases and we will give you some ideas and examples for that later on. Um, now we're going a bit into the coding and um, also you will see a few lines of code but um, the amazing thing about this API and how it is designed is that with a very little code and you will be really surprised how little it is, um, you're able to control the output on the secondary display. So essentially, what you need is just the presentation class, um, which is connected to your external display. And within this class, you define the content to be shown on the external display. Um, as with many other things, um, Google gives you two ways to uh, determine the display on which you want to output. One way is using the media router, which was uh, introduced in API level uh, 16. Um, if you use this API, basically the system decides for you what is the appropriate display to output to, because you can connect actually various displays. I mean, you can maybe connect one or two displays over Miracast, you can connect another one over cable. Um, and if you use the media router, uh, you don't, don't need to take care of that. The system will decide for you which is the most appropriate output device uh, and you are already there. If you have some more sophisticated use cases and probably or maybe want to, to address several displays simultaneously, you can use the display manager, which was also introduced with uh, 4.2, API level 17, where you get the uh, whole enumeration of available displays and um, you can decide by yourself which one you want to use. How does it work um, to get a display? Um, here we've shown the both methods uh, I just explained before. Uh, in case you're using the media router, um, you define a type. Here the root, root type live video, so you determine what kind of capability your display um, should have, and the system will give you the display which is available for this output. If you use the display manager, as mentioned before, um, it will give you a full range of displays if you have multiple displays connected. So you um, define here uh, the display category presentation, and presentation means these are displays which are external to the device. And then if there are multiple displays connected, you will get a, a enumeration, and um, you can then choose uh, by whatever means which one is appropriate for your application. Um, what is very important, um, you need to consider that the external display likely has a different resolution than your device. Um, and likely it's a bigger resolution than your device has if you have a full HD TV um, or even upcoming 4K TVs um, or a monitor. Um, yeah, you have a different or higher resolution and uh, through the API you can uh, ask for the metrics of the display. And so once you have these metrics, of course you can adapt your uh, content and uh, resources accordingly and you should prepare your application to support these <coughs> higher resolutions properly. 
um, because I mean this is a, the whole idea of it that you um, uh, design the content uh, to be used on this uh, different resolution displays. Okay, and then um, it all comes down, as I said before, to the presentation class. And if you use the presentation class, um, and the presentation class is connected to your display, which you have chosen before, um, then all you do is to inflate the layout you have been defined before inside the presentation class, and then everything is almost done. Because then the, uh, um, the layout which you defined is automatically by the system uh, shown on the external display. And um, if you haven't seen it at our booth, we've made a very simple uh, demo application which shows this capability. And um, that's basically it. Um, in this presentation class, you can, of course, do anything. You can uh, do the very simple text example here, but you can also run OpenGL uh, within it. So you can uh, have any kinds of content in this presentation class. Um, a few words about the life cycle. Um, the presentation is cancelled when the display uh, which is attached is disconnected. So um, you have to take care of that in your application that you handle all these cases um, in order to um, yeah, properly, properly run the um, application. Um, also, um, as I just mentioned, in case you're using OpenGL within it, um, the context would get lost um, if you don't take care of it. So you have to manually um, take care of it. Um, that's a small pitfall you have to remember when you design your application to handle the life cycle of the presentation properly. Um, yeah, finally, there's a nice developer option built in into Android 4.2 to test your application using the API. Um, in the developer menu, you'll find an option to emulate a secondary display, and you can choose between uh, several resolutions. And once you enable this option, you get an overlay uh, on top of your screen, um, and this overlay basically is the emulation of the secondary display. So in case you don't have a uh, possibility to connect a, a real display to it, this is a nice and handy option <coughs> to uh, develop and test your application instantly on the device. All right, so that was a very brief overview about the API itself. Um, as mentioned, uh, we think it's, it's pretty simple and very nice, nicely designed in order to extend your existing applications or in order to build new applications with it. And uh, finally, I would like to give you a few ideas what we think you could, could do with this API, also in connection with Miracast. Um, but of course, we hope that you will generate a lot of more ideas using it. Um, and yeah, one of the, um, let's say, straightforward use cases um, I already touched upon a little bit is that within your application, um, you design a specific mode that handles the external display so that you, l you utilize the resolution of the external display um, in a proper way. Um, so, for instance, if you have a browser, um, okay, the, the content is rendered on your phone according to the phone's resolution, but if you have a higher resolution on your external display, you're able to utilize this higher resolution, actually, and um, renders the content according to this resolution. Um, another possible idea would be that you have on your external display um, the actual content rendered, be it a, a browser, as in the example here, be it uh, a, a game UI, a full game UI on your TV or PC monitor, while you have on the phone just the controller UI. For instance, in case of browsers, the URL input and some uh, movement controls, or in case of a game, you could have a game controller UI on your phone and the gameplay uh, displayed on the external monitor. Or uh, finally, why don't you um, build a kind of PC replacement so that you have a kind of desktop UI output to the external display 
And uh, of course, you could then also connect uh, a mouse and a keyboard over Bluetooth to your Android <coughs> device, and you could uh, basically use your device like you use your laptop or your PC at home, always um, with the UI adapted to the higher resolution of the external monitors. And we think this gives um, this combination gives a lot of opportunities to application developers to explore. <coughs> And um, yeah, it's already there, and you can start uh, developing for it. So in summary, um, as we discussed, uh, Miracast itself is a method to transmit the audio and video from the device over Wi-Fi to an external display. And the good thing and important thing is this is an open standard. So this is nothing LG-specific. Um, it's already built in into several other devices of other manufacturers, um, and uh, it's coming uh, on, on more and more devices. As Christoph mentioned, it depends, of course, on the CPU and GPU power of the phone. Um, but as this is, uh, of course, always increasing, we will see it over the time in more devices. And then the secondary display API, which is introduced with uh, 4.2 API level 17, um, you can programmatically control the output on these external displays if they are connected over Miracast or some other technology, cable bound, it doesn't matter. You can just do it. And uh, this gives really exciting new use cases for new applications, which I hope you get an idea of and uh, which we hope you will then start working on. And that's it. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you haven't seen the demo, come to our booth. It's just over there and see it live. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.